I'm Dr. Scott Fauci. I'm a neurosurgeon with the Fauci Institute at Swedish Medical Center. I treat patients with chronic spinal cord injuries from any cause. After a spinal cord injury, the initial paralysis occurs, but many things can happen subsequently. They can become progressively more paralyzed. Uh, and, and we have surgical techniques to stop that progression and even gain neurologic function back. We are at Pikes Peak International Raceway today, and we are preparing our NASCAR Cup car for a demonstration of brain-machine interface driving. We're going to have a spinal cord injured individual drive this car just using his brain and thought. How is that possible? Well, uh, the brain has billions and billions of nerve cells, and these nerve cells conduct various electrical impulses with intentional thought. And each thought has a particular electrical fingerprint. So if we detect that electrical fingerprint, we can use that in a particular action. So this patient has an electrode on the surface of his brain that can detect all these electrical fingerprints and thoughts. Uh, what we are doing here today is a collaboration of medical science, basic science, and NASCAR. German came in just yesterday. Uh, we met him for the first time on the track. Uh, I could tell he was nervous about this whole thing because he was, for the first time, going to be sitting in an 850 horsepower NASCAR cup car, and we were going to ask him to drive it hands-free, feet-free, and using his brain. And so that made him a little bit nervous, as you can understand. And I get it. Uh, he also told me that he never really, he never got his driver's license because he got injured before uh, he really could drive. So he had no significant driving experience. So really his first driving experience is getting into an 850 horsepower NASCAR cup car and being told to drive with his brain. So granted, uh, his uh, uh, trepidation was warranted. So we put him in the car, uh, the helmet, the engineers got the car all synced up. Uh, we took him out on the track, and lo and behold, he did it first time around. Uh, took several laps. We were all proud of him, very excited for him. So after this technology is developed, it could be applied, for instance, to driving an electrical wheelchair or a golf cart, uh, uh, mobilizing a robotic arm, mobilizing an exoskeleton, so exoskeleton devices on the body that uh, we can make work. It can be used for communication systems. Uh, internet communication it can be environmental controls. It can be even used to actuate implanted medical devices in people. For this population, mobility and independence is everything. And how can we help them that way? Well, human-machine interface, brain-machine interface is one of those things that now can help uh, in a very significant way. And that's why we are motivated to really work on this hard now. The hope and the goal is to give uh, mobility and independence to this population in the short term. Yes, that was sick, man. That was